everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan with the Platinum Fiberglass Series Upgraded with Solar Package Wildwood FSX 167. If you're not familiar with this layout, it is an amazing either solo runaround camper or if you're a cozy couple, you don't mind really snuggling up close in bed at night, you're not quite to the stage of your, your marriage and your lifetime where you need the king bed to keep the space between you. Or if you're like me and my wife, I just create too much body heat and I sweat her to death if I get too close in bed. Anyway, at least that's the excuse she gives me. <laughs> anyway, am I the only one? Probably not. This camper right here, it, it really serves as like um, an awesome working person's uh, version of like a 19FD Rockwood GeoPro floor plan. We have a front Murphy-ish kind of bed that can fold up and down or give us a sofa space, which gives this camper the space of a slide out without the weight and the cost of a slide out. Now, I will always try to give you the good with the bad. Uh, what we're looking at here today is an upgraded model that adds some extra weight on top of the base model. That eats into the cargo capacity, and this thing has, uh, if you do plan to really pack heavy, you may want to look at more of the base version of this because uh, as we're seeing it here, it only has between about 400 to 450 pounds of cargo. It is not something you're going to want to tow around with full holding tanks. There's different trailers for different purposes. Like this isn't made to be some insane high dollar, fancy off-road, off-grid, extreme camper or something like that. It's just made to be for someone like me, Larry Lunchbucket, Jane Sixpack. People who still work every day, but you have a weekend to go away, you just don't like that tin skin, you prefer the easier cleaning of the fiberglass, this would be a great fit. Or remember, the base version of this is still a tin skin uh, and will save you some weight and some cost. So we carry it both ways. You have it available both ways. We're just seeing it one way today. Uh, you can always check the link in our video description to uh, see what we have in stock in either build. Uh, current pricing, or at least last known MSRP. And if you appreciate the way that we tell you the good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button to always catch us on the next one to know you're going to get some straight facts. Now, I mentioned already, and I'm going to keep mentioning how this is not one of the big luxury class, super expensive, insanely equipped kind of crazy trailers. But at the same time, I'm going to keep mentioning that because if you look at the things that actually matter, the things you're gonna use every day, like you're going to enjoy the airflow in this, the amazing door side giant window right here, that full size air conditioner that you saw me walking under in our early floor plan in a flash kind of footage. I'm about 6'3 with boots and hat for reference. So keep that in mind also when we jump together in the shower, uh, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, regardless. Um, there's a smart lighting package in there. There's just enough lighting where if you really want to lighten and brighten it up, you can. But what's also kind of cool is how you can still control each of those lights a little bit individually, by the way. Now, um, that vent right there, uh, that you see that sort of skylight, that has a little mini, uh, I call it the four inch fart fan, the little blade fan that you can get in uh, campers. You often see them in the bathrooms. You'll see another one in this. What's cool about that though, is because the wiring and everything is already there, if you wanted to upgrade this to have like a big XL vent fan for airflow, you could. And again, if I'm being fair, I would really like to see at least a frosty glass window in the door, but Wildwood just doesn't do those. That being said, if I wanted lots of visibility and light and airflow, I could always just leave the anti-slam door open and enjoy the, uh, uh, the screen door, as it were. Now, over here, a couple things. Uh, be at the, I guess you might call it the headboard or the footboard of the bed, whatever, on the side stand, you've got yourself a set of household and USB plugs, but the RV that we're looking at today is outfitted with their extended dry camping package. And I really like that name. They call it extended dry camping. They don't call it like permanent boondock off gridden. It's not going to run the air. It's not going to run the microwave. It doesn't have an inverter. It's something designed to really tend the batteries to do very well tending those batteries and to give you more time when you are, uh, you know, off grid, uh, just to help, like if you're going to make a, a, a parking lot stay over to make sure that your 12 volt fridge doesn't eat the batteries, although they don't tend to eat batteries that quickly anyway. But again, this is a North South Murphy bed model. But what I like here is how they kind of zhuzhed up the sofa a little bit by giving it some decent uh, back cushion. So it doesn't look like you're sitting on just a pontoon bench. What you may not realize, though, is that stuff gets totally out of the way, and you can access the pass-through storage whether you're inside or outside. But when you see it from the exterior, it is totally partitioned off, which I think is actually really nice. One of the things I like to do for you is actually get my pandemic-pounded, squishy dad bod up in here, uh, up in here, to give you an idea of how much space is here. So this is an easy two-adult kind of seating space. Now. 
Um, this RV, when we turn around in a second, you're going to see that, like, str almost at your point of view, straight behind you, there's a sliding bathroom, uh, like, pocket door, which I really prefer in terms of everyday function because it means that you're not, it's a small space, you're not walking around one another. So in this one, they put the TV uh, hookups over here, which, yeah, that's a little bit of a neck turn, but if you put yourself a swing arm TV mount there, and remember, even though you're seeing fiberglass in this trailer today, this is not a laminated trailer. This is still a, a wood stud, stick-built trailer. There's just a fiberglass skin over top of that. The standard bill on this is a tin skin. Keep those things in mind, because sometimes if you don't see it, you kind of forget about it. Um, so there's studs in the wall we could easily attach something to. But what I want to show you here is the Murphy bed function of this. It is a bendy bed, as you're going to see. I'm going to try to slide over here. And, well, that was that worked out conveniently enough. These fell right down for me. Now, you might notice, you see how these cushions puff up a little bit past that uh, that side stand line? That, that That's where the bed's going to rest. So, when you... Whoa, hello. <laughs> when you drop this down... If it sits here like this, it's gonna get a little squishy. But when you sit on it, it'll squish those cushions down. Alternatively, you could take those cushions out, set them like on top of one of the dinette booths. You could do something that way if you were so inclined. Now, whatever you decide to do, uh, this is a folding style mattress. Now, I think 99% of people are going to agree. This would probably not be your preference given the choice and given the opportunity, right? But again, we're at a a simpler series class, uh, a, a more aggressive price point, fancy mechanical mechanisms just aren't available for these dollars. If you want those things, we definitely have them here at Halo RV, but they come on trailers that naturally have a higher uh, price tag. This is a 60 by 74 Camp Queen, and that is actually, I think, a, a better bed than what most single axle campers have. Is it a 60 by 80 uh, True Queen? No. And I'm doing my best Burt Reynolds photo spread over here, and I'm trying really hard to keep my boots off of the bed, by the way. It's not Adidas season. It's now boot season, so unfortunately, they're not as easy to take on and off, and I don't feel like getting frostbite on, frost bite on my toes. Frostbrite? Is that Rainbow Bright's uh, cousin from the world of Frozen? Let it go, Josh. Anyway, um, the reason I'm talking about this is most... Murphy beds, most north-south single axle camper beds are a roughly full bed. They're only 54 wide by 74 long. This being 60 inches wide means if you're tall like me, yeah, your feet are hanging off the bed. No doubt about that, guys. But if you're a little more gravity friendly, like my wife, two people could sleep on here just fine. And I don't mind sleeping on a short bed because I tend to curl up and sleep in the fetal position like this. The thing that I always mean to say is I don't sleep stiff as a board. What I always end up saying is I don't sleep stiff as a feather, which, obviously, stupid, right? And to do a complete 180 flip right here, this is what I was seeing while you were looking at me. So when you're on the sofa, this is back to being your point of view. You see how you have that sliding bathroom privacy door I was talking about? That's where, say, like a Wolf Pup 16FQ, a Rockwood Geo Pro, that's where they would have their entertainment center. Because Wildwood here opted for that pocket door, which, I mean, maybe not a sliding door, not a true pocket door. It means they had to move their TV hookups. They moved them over here. And, yeah, again, it's a bit of a neck crank scenario. But I don't think most of the people in a trailer like this are extremely worried about the entertainment setup as compared to those higher dollar, higher budget things. With this having a little fridge outside, a power awning with lighting, and a gas grill quick connect, I can see myself hanging out outdoors on the picnic table. Although, pro tip... Always bring yourself your own picnic table coverings because gross things happen on those picnic tables. I won't get into that. Um, anyway, now over here in the kitchen space, you notice there's some household and USB outlets there. Uh, above the kitchen window, there's another set of outlets, which is a very uncommon location. But because they went with a maximized kitchen viewing and breeze window right there uh, above that sealed edge countertop material, there just wasn't a whole lot of other space to to uh, apply something. Now, looking up here at the uh, the kitchen space, they opted uh, for a giant farm sink as compared to like a, uh, a circular sink like you might find in an Apex Nano or a Wolf Pup. And I would really be curious, what do you prefer, the big farm sink or the uh, the circular sink like you find in some of those other guys? 
what I mean, you know, there's there's different benefits to different things. I like the bigger sink on this one, but it does mean that when those covers are off, you have almost no prep space. I think that's pretty normal in little trailers like this, though. You may have noticed that we are carpetless and with a direct venting furnace. That's that big rectangle square black thing we're looking at right there. You don't need heat vents pumping through the entire RV. It's, it's a small cabin space. It gets along just fine. That is also one of those larger 10.7 cubic foot DC compressor refrigerators right there, which those things cool extremely fast. They are totally uh, travel safe because they don't have like an open flame or burner. You got a little reflection of me in the uh, bathroom mirror there. And this is a better angle to look at that powered vent fan, the little four inch fart fan that you see up top right there uh, that we uh, talked about earlier. That is an easy upgrade to a larger vent fan if that something like that is your preference, by the way. Uh, now, when we uh, look over here, you know, it's seven and a half wide. So this is more than just a one adult on each side of the dinette kind of thing. The other thing is if you got long legs like me, something people don't often consider is you see that little, uh, you know, my humps down there, that little box, that's the wheel well. Um, it has to kind of stick up into the camper. So the extra width on this uh, dinette as a result of the seven and a half foot wide body means that you can kind of interlace your legs a little bit so you're not constantly playing a kung fu kick fighting position uh, under the dining table there. Now, if you notice, of course, that folds down into a sleeper, but it folds down into a bigger sleeper. And below that, you have just two big banks of storage space. And I have an idea, and I would really like your feedback on this. I think I see an opportunity to repurpose some of that because you do have to pull the cushions off to access that storage. What would you think if that was just a wide open kind of compartment right there that you could use as like a shoe garage or a little pet den right next to the entry door right here? Personally, I think that would be a really cool thing. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, also, kudos to Wildwood for putting a little bit bigger, a little bit better fire extinguisher in one of these. None of the RV fire extinguishers are great, and I'm not saying you should ever pretend to be a firefighter. If your RV ever has a fire, please G-T-F-O, which obviously stands for Get the Family Out. That is a technical term, obviously. Uh, please don't report me to HR. Moving on. Uh, over here, this little guy. This is actually basically, most people are going to use it like a set of USB plugs or wood. This is a mount for a drive portable Bluetooth speaker. Most of the time, like in a lot of Cherokee campers, that's all you get is just the mount. In this Wildwood FSX, you are actually getting the portable Bluetooth speaker with the RV. Our check-in team did a good job of cataloging and removing loose objects from this RV so they wouldn't go walking on their own two legs down the highway before we had a chance to get to them today. So uh, tell them good job on what they did. Unfortunately, it means I don't really have a good representation here to show you. But I do have, actually reminds me, um, I've done a separate video on one of those things before. So if you'd like to learn more about the speaker that comes with this, uh, take a look at the link in the video description. And if I forget to leave it there, be like, hey, idiot, you forgot your link and I'll, I'll fix that. Now, pardon my footprints over here in the shower pan. You won't see those when you take this home because we don't charge you to clean the campers at Halet RV. And I know that sounds insane, but a lot of places still do. Even though we made the mess, they'll charge you to clean it up. We don't do that. Uh, also, notice full shower surround paneling, and they did something here that is just a stroke of genius. I wish more trailers would do this, especially small trailers. Um, I see a lot of single axle little campers that are only six and a half foot tall that don't put a skylight or vent above the shower like that. Now, again, at my height, yes, my head's most definitely inside that vent, but the fact is, uh, at least it's there, at least if I need to, when I've got soap in my eyes, I can stand straight up and down and get myself scrubbed and then, uh, you know, lean my head down and, and get, uh, you know, cleaned off and all that kind of stuff. So there's, uh, it's, it's just smarter execution. And frankly, I think this thing has one of the best bathrooms I've ever seen in any single axle camper. Look at all this storage. Look at all of this. And this right here, that's removable. So if you have uh, Uncle Gary's sundress, and you need tall spaces to hang things, you can do that. Or you can leave the shelf in there. You could add shelving. You could add totes or baskets or storage organizers. You could do a little bit of whatever you want. And something else I noticed down here, it's not a big camper, 
but it's reasonably fluffy friendly. I'm not the biggest dude. Um, so it's possible somebody else may not fit as well as me, but at my size, I had plenty of room to do my business and take care of myself when I was done. And I know that that's maybe not the most flowery thing to talk about, but I think it's an important thing to talk about that not a lot of people realize uh, not every camper is going to do well for them. I like to give you that extra information. I hope that helps you. But I suppose if there's one thing this camper is lacking, it's more cowbell. So you can call me X, because X is going to give it to you. Now, outside here, I actually want to start down in the pass-through on the driver's side to really drive home, on a, no pun intended, the fact that that is a true pass-through. So many little campers, and frankly, even getting up into the super slide size campers, do not have a full pass-through compartment. They might have a good baggage door on the driver's side, or pardon me, the door side of the RV, but over here on the driver's side, often they have nothing. Um, now, again, point counterpoint, it has a magnet holdback for that baggage door, which is cool. It is a single magnet holdback, but considering the baggage door isn't high enough, it's gonna like fall on your head and, and give you a concussion, that doesn't really bother me. As we discussed inside, one of the things that does add a little bit of weight to this, but it really adds the extra size on the inside that I appreciate, is the seven and a half foot wide body package. It makes this an awesome pairing for, let's say you have a 5,000 pound tow rated SUV or a mid-size pickup, you're going to yank this around all day very comfortably and have a nice little base camp there when you get there. Now again, what we're looking at today is the optional uh, Platinum Series Fiberglass Exterior, and that's all it is. It's very different from, say, like the Cherokee Black Label Series, which has like a whole equipment package loaded with it. Platinum Series FSXs, it's just fiberglass. But it's crazy how with just the fiberglass, it really kind of feels like it transforms everything. You saw that simple little uh, side mount solar prep plug there. So keep in mind, the optional solar package you have equipped on this, uh, it, it's good for extended dry camping. It's not made to be the be all end all of solar. It's a 190 watt package, which is better than a lot of stick and tin campers that give us maybe 100 watts. And with that 30 amp controller, you could definitely expand on that. Plus, you still have the side solar prep plug. That is one of those things a lot of people easily miss. Uh, a, a lot of brands who have added a roof solar prep plug have removed their side portable panel plugs, which means if you're parked in the shade, you're basically SOL and you're up that creek without a paddle. You know what I mean? Um, the little uh, refrigerator over here, it, it is not hooked up to an inverter or anything like that. So if you wanted to be able to use this uh, in transit or off grid, you're going to have to kind of consider that some sort of power source to power it. This, this trailer, again, it can have some, uh, you know, casual off grid function. If you're looking to stay longer term off grid, I don't know that this is necessarily the right trailer in the right class for all of that, but I also don't know that it couldn't be made uh, upfitted to be a little bit that way and still save money off of some of those big fancy pants laminated jobs. Now, maybe you like the laminated jobs. Maybe you like Asdell. That's cool. We have those things here. This is a different camper at a wildly different price point. And I really like how we have that fridge there and the uh, propane quick connect off the side or as I like to call it, the cooker hooker. Um, it, it gives you the opportunity where if you want an outside kitchen kind of function, this RV can provide that for you um, without really eating up a lot of space on the inside of the RV. The uh, black tank flush and outside utility shower, I cannot stress enough how uncommon it is for a single axle little camper like this, even though we're looking at fiberglass, a stick and tin class camper, to have both of those features on a little trailer. And if you've never camped, you don't realize how useful and important those things are and how you will use them almost every single day of every single camping trip you ever take. The RV does not have a ladder, nor is it ladder capable, but uh, they make telescoping ladders that could very easily slide in that front storage compartment. Um, and uh, if you want to pull one out, frankly, those telescoping ladders can hold more weight. You do always want to make sure you have a safety buddy kind of holding on to that for you or some sort of ratchet strap system to keep those things secure. Uh, my buddy Joshua Sheehan at Gander Flight, he's a, uh, he runs his own YouTube channel. He's a full-timer type guy. Um, he came up with some really good solutions where basically you can effectively like ratchet strap one of those portable uh, extension ladders 
um, to the chassis of the RV to really anchor that sucker down, which I thought was a brilliant solution. If I remember, I will leave you a link to that in the video description. And if I forget, I really want somebody to uh, to leave me a note to be like, hey, dummy, you forgot the link again, stupid. <laughs> And if you use those exact words, I wouldn't even be offended. Actually, I would probably just laugh. Now down here, we've got one of the, uh, I think, more important updates. And I'm, I think I'm at a perfect angle to really explain how this works. You've got an enclosed accessibility right there, but you notice it's not a fully enclosed belly. You can still see where there's not something enclosed there. So why did they do a little bit of A and a little bit of B? It just, it, at a glance, it doesn't really make sense. Well, it, here's the best I've figured out on that. All right, so what they've done here, and, and frankly, remember that most single axle trailers uh, have like virtually no protection and enclosure in the underbelly. Any protection and enclosure in the underbelly is exceptionally rare in this classification of camper. Now, when we start getting into some higher budget things, some uh, Geo Pros, some J Feather Micros, Embers, yeah, those are gonna have an enclosed underbelly for like double the budget of this thing or 50% more, a significant amount more basically. When you're looking at stick and tin trailers, almost nobody does anything on the belly. The fact that they're doing anything down there is exceptional. Then they're using the same sectionalized drop panel accessibility that the big like triple slide monster Wildwoods use is awesome. So that God forbid you gotta get down there to do anything, you can drop a panel, do service work, put it back up, never leave a signature that you were there. The other thing is, it's not fluted polypropylene, which is a fancy pants way of saying basically like plastic cardboard, if that makes sense. That's what most underbelly materials are. It looks like cardboard if you cut it, except it's just made of plastic, you know? Um, it is an ABS molded material. It's far more impact resistant and it encloses the holding tanks. This is not a magic four seasons camper. It doesn't have magic four seasons heating or anything like that in the underbelly. It doesn't have tank holder heating packages. Those are things reserved for those more expensive trailers. That's why they're in those more expensive trailers. But not everybody needs all that. Frankly guys, when the snowflakes are flying, I ain't camping. This trailer right here would do me just fine. Would I like the fancy pants, shiny shoes, executive package version of a little camper? Yes, of course, that would be awesome. Do I need all that? No, not at all. And for someone like me, who the, the ironic part of being in this business is that I don't get to camp very often. A trailer like this would just do the job very well. It's the reason I drive that pathetic little Kia Soul every day. I love my little car. It's got cruise, it's got Bluetooth. It's all I need. I drive five minutes, 10 minutes back and forth to work every day. I don't need more than that. That's what this is. This is just a no nonsense, but good looking, smarter class little camper. And probably one of the most unsung qualities on this camper is the battery disconnect right up here on the tongue of that. So that when the RV's in storage, um, even if you like, let's say you pull the fuse on the 12 volt fridge so it's not sitting there cannibalizing your battery. Um, there's other things in this RV, other things with circuit panels like water heaters that will slowly trickle drain off the battery. Having that hard disconnect there, but the solar package that's on this, if you get the solar option, will still actively maintain and tend that battery so that when you are ready to go camping, when you want to get out there, you hit the button, turn on the lights, it's going to be there for you. Open the awning, whatever the case may be. So if you appreciate how we went around this for you today, make sure you hit that like button to help spread the message here. Leave me some comments and let me know what do you like about this one and what would you change given the opportunity? And again, things like the cargo carrying capacity on this trailer that we're looking at here today are abnormally low. And I want to make sure someone's aware of that so you can make sure you're getting the right trailer. The last thing I want to do is fail to conveniently mention that fact. And then somebody makes a trip all the way here from Timbuktu to buy this thing. And they go, you know, loading it down with all kinds of cargo and bend an axle and tow some, uh, tow in some uh, tires or something like that. I want you to get straight facts. I want you to make sure you're getting your second camera the first time. So if that's a problem for you, we have other things that could work. But if you're like me, and I, I, I can seriously pack three t-shirts, a pair of shorts, and I don't even know if I need socks, I'll make it through a weekend just fine. This would be an awesome fit for you. Uh, so let me know what you think. Hit that subscribe button and take care. Stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.